Hi everybody, it's Michael here with another video on 3D printing using RepRap 3D printers. Today I'm doing part one of a series on calibrating your extrusion. And this is going to be a series that's in several parts. Uh, what I'm going to be doing initially, and what we're going to be doing today, is doing what I would call sort of the coarse calibration, where we're just making sure that the machine is in the right ballpark and that the, the extrusion is pretty close to what we need. And then in later parts of the series, I'll be talking about some of the techniques that I found and learned from other people on how to really get the extrusion fine-tuned so that your prints are looking really, really pretty. So to get right to it, today, like I said, what we're going to do is do a basic calibration of our E-steps. Now, what is an E-step? Well, put simply, like all motors on a RepRap printer, this stepper right here has, is being told by the firmware uh, that it it's expects a certain amount of filament to be moved for each step of this motor. And that's what we're going to calibrate today. In short, what we're going to make sure is that the amount of filament that is pushed through is pretty close to what we're telling it to do. And if it's not, well, I'll show you how to make the appropriate adjustments. Now this is a good basic setup. Anytime you're commissioning a new printer or you've made a major change to the anatomy of your extruder, either putting on a new hot end or possibly a new extruder design, I would recommend going through this process just to make sure your printer is pretty close to begin with. And then, like I said, we'll work on some of the fine-tuning uh, aspects of it, depending on if you change your filament, for example, that can actually have a difference, uh, that can make a difference in your extrusion, and we'll talk about that shortly. So, to get right to it, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take my calipers, and I've got these set for a 120 millimeter uh, space right here, and what I'm going to do is simply take a, uh, I'm going to take a marker, and I would suggest that when you're doing this for real, uh, use something like a hobby knife to get a really, really fine cut on this so that your mark is really small. And as you'll see here, this mark I'm going to make with the, uh, with the marker is pretty coarse. And that is more than a millimeter thick. And you want this to be as precise as possible. Any, uh, whatever precision you put in right now is going to come back later when we start to make the finer adjustments. Okay, now I've got my mark made, as I said, 120 millimeters from the top of the extruder right here. And if you have a different extruder design, that's fine. Just find some spot where you can get a good reference and you want to make that mark as close as possible. I'm using 120. Other people might have different, um, different values for that and that's just fine. Now what I'm going to do is move over to Pronterface and I'm going to tell Pronterface to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. And of course I've got my hot end already up to operating temperature and I'm just going to roll that through and we're going to see how much we actually moved. Okay, so now we've done our 100 millimeter extrusion as commanded by Pronterface. And again, we had the mark set at 120 millimeters above the uh, top of the extruder block right here. So if this printer were correctly calibrated, we would expect this value right here to be exactly 20 millimeters. And it is pretty close. We got about 23 millimeters right here that are showing instead of the 20 that we should have. So we're off by about three millimeters, which is not that far off, but it's still good enough that I think we can make that a little bit better. So what we got when we asked for 100 millimeters, doing a quick little bit of math, our 100 millimeters minus the three extra we have here is 97 millimeters is what we got. So we have a 90, we asked for 100, we got 97. There's one other value that we need to determine before we can start doing our calculation. And we're gonna look for that right now. Okay, the next value we need to determine is what the current uh, setting is for the E-steps in the printer. And I'm going to do that by just going to the LCD interface on Marlin right here. And I'm going to scroll down to Control, and then to Motion. And then all the way at the bottom of this list, we're going to see the E-steps per millimeter. And what we see is currently we have this set at 900. And 900 was a little bit short for us, so we're going to have to uh, take that number along with the number we requested, which was 100 millimeters, the number that we got, which was 97 millimeters, and then the actual current E-step setting, which is 900 steps per millimeter. Okay, now we've got those three values that we've been talking about, so what are we going to do with them? Well, I promised you some math, and here it is. We're gonna do some E-steps math, and the equation that we're gonna use is gonna look just like this. 
So the two quantities that we got from our extrusion experiment, which is what we asked for, which was 100 millimeters, and what we actually got, uh, which was 97 millimeters, we're going to divide what we asked for by what we got. So it's what we asked for over what we got, in this case 100 over 97, and that gives us 1.031. Now what that gives us is a multiplier to apply to our current e-steps. So we multiply 1.031 by 900 and we get roughly 928. Okay, we're back at the printer now and we've uh, made our determination about what we need to set our e-steps to. So I'm going to go back into the menu right there into control and then motion, and then down to E steps per millimeter, and I'm gonna crank that back up to our calculated value of 928 even. Okay, now that that's uh, in place, I'm gonna go back up to the main screen, and now we're gonna go ahead and run another calibration test and see how close we get. Okay, now we have reset our E-Steps value in the LCD interface to uh, Marlin, and we've gone ahead and done the extrusion test again. We have asked uh, Pronterface to extrude for us uh, 100 millimeters of filament after having marked it 120. So once again, if we are correctly calibrated, we're expecting this mark right here to be just about 20 millimeters. And what I'm getting right here is 20.1 is what I've actually gotten right there. So I'm going to go ahead and call that good. We're within a millimeter, just within a one tenth of a millimeter actually. So I'm going to call that calibrated. So now we have our value. The only thing left to do is to go ahead and write it uh, to the EEPROM of the printer. And we'll be doing that right now. Okay, our printer is now properly calibrated. We've got our E-steps right where we want them to be. Now all we're gonna do is save that to the uh, EEPROM on the printer. And if you don't have the uh, EEPROM functions activated in your version of Marlin, I would highly suggest doing that. That is uh, actually a topic for another video or quite possibly a blog post. Uh, but for now, we're gonna assume you've got that working. And the way I'm gonna access that simply is to go up to my LCD menu, go back to control, roll down to store memory and I'm going to select it. What I have now done is written the current settings on the printer to the EEPROM so that anytime the, uh, the printer boots up again, it's going to take those settings unless I specifically tell it to go back to a failsafe or to load something else. So we have now calibrated our E-steps. Uh, we've, we've taken a measurement, we've made some calculations, we've verified our calculations with additional measurement, and now we have saved those settings to the printer. And that is how you configure your e-steps. In the next couple of uh, videos, I'll be talking about some of the ways I've learned to really fine-tune your extrusion and get it exactly where you want it to be to make your prints just exactly the right size and looking really nice. So until then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please rate, comment, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.